hey guys welcome back to my channel i don't even know where to begin i have been gone for about two weeks now um and i mentioned in a couple of videos ago that i was leaving to puerto rico and i left to puerto rico on september 14th and was supposed to come back on september 22nd but because of hurricane maria i was stranded on the island and wanted to tell you guys my story and this is probably going to be a two-part video because the second part will be not nice and not good so i will film that at a separate time i wanted to talk about my experience firsthand through the hurricane and really let you guys know what's going on in puerto rico and what's going on in san juan which is the capital of puerto rico and that is where i was and i hope that you guys take from this what you can and will really help puerto rico after viewing this because if you haven't already of course because to begin to explain the current state of my beloved island is very hard because a lot of people just won't get it and even even though you watch the news and even though you read the articles it's hard to really understand what that is like and you know even though thankfully i wasn't in a house whose roof got torn off or anything i was still there to witness the worst time in puerto rico in 85 years and so this is my story so to begin um with puerto rico as i said i left on september 14th and i had booked a trip um with myself and my boyfriend for september 14th to the 22nd and it was originally him and i um and then like a month before we left my aunt called me and she was like hey like um what days are you guys going to puerto rico and when are you leaving when are you coming back and i told her and she's like well i think your uncle and i are gonna book the trip too we're gonna go with you guys and so of course you know naturally i was like wow that's great like that sounds like so much fun and then um shortly after that my parents decided that they wanted to go too so it was going to be all of us and the reason that i booked this week or that specific week was because osuna was actually going to be in concert i'm a big osuna fan too and he was playing at the um choliseo in puerto rico on two nights he was playing on friday september 15th and saturday september 16th and so i got tickets for the uh, 16th and from when we got there it was like rainy and gloomy and just you know ugly outside on the first like two days um and the sun would like pop in and out but we didn't care we were like screw this we're still gonna relax on the beach and you know enjoy our time here because i hadn't been to puerto rico in five years and neither had my parents and so we um we wanted to take advantage of that and we since we were there in the beginning through the weekend from thursday to sunday we wanted to do like all of the um relaxing and then even the partying at night and you know the concert and the club and all of that we wanted to do all that for the weekend the osuna concert was fantastic um after that we went to brava which is the biggest club in san juan and um we saw delegato there too which was great uh and i've vlogged I vlogged mostly all of the good stuff and then I kind of got a couple of things in the aftermath of the hurricane and in the the craziness that went on. Long story short, I I had a beautiful trip in the beginning. Hurricane Maria happened. The hotel that I was staying at kicked us out. 
which is a whole nother video, which is a whole nother video because that was insane. And you best believe I'm going in on those motherfuckers. Stay tuned for that one. The beginning of the trip was absolutely amazing. And um, like I said, we wanted to save all the sightseeing for during the week. It was my boyfriend's first time in Puerto Rico. We wanted to take him everywhere to El Morro, to La Placita, to um, to uh, El Junque. Even though El Junque, I heard, was a little uh, after Irma, we were still going to try and make it there. And so I was staying at the El San Juan Resort. And my parents were staying at the trip by Wyndham. And so was my aunt and uncle. They were also staying in that hotel. And then on Monday, the 18th, I got a phone call from the front desk at my hotel to let me know that they were evacuating the entire hotel. And before all this, before all this, we had kind of heard rumblings of the hurricane and, you know, at first it was a tropical storm and then it became a full-blown hurricane and then it broke the record as the, or, from what I believe, the, please, like, excuse if I say things incorrectly, I was without TV, without phone signal, without anything for a very long time, and I'm just trying to catch up now. So as far as I knew, or I was hearing then, it was the quickest hurricane to grow, like from category one to category five in like 24 hours. Hearing all of that, we're like still kind of in denial, and the lady told me on the phone, she was like, yeah, we're evacuating the whole hotel. Um, I would recommend that you find a flight back home or you can try and find another hotel to stay in, but you know, that that's what I would recommend you do. And I was like, what? Like I still have the entire week left of my trip. Like there was still a full five days there. And I was like, you know what? No, I'm not gonna leave. Like I'm gonna ride this out. It's probably not gonna be that bad. Just telling you honestly, this is, this is what I thought and what we all thought. Um, I went crazy through Expedia. I was on the phone with Expedia and we were trying to find another hotel. Um, they agreed that the El San Juan would refund me for those last five days that I had paid for. So I would get a refund for that, but for the new hotel that I wanted to stay at, I had to pay out of pocket. Of course, my first thought was maybe I can get a room at the trip by Wyndham since the rest of my family's there. Tried that, no rooms. Anything on the Isla Verde Strip, if you guys have been to Puerto Rico, you know there's that strip along Isla Verde beach of different hotels. None of them had any rooms available. The lady at one point thought that she had gotten me a room at the Hilton, or, or Doubletree Hilton, something like that. And when she went to book it, boom, it was gone. The, the room was taken. And so she was looking and looking and looking and she found a room for me at the Atwin Chimes in El Condado. And it was like the same amount that I was gonna get back in the refund. So essentially it would be like I hadn't paid anything extra for the other hotel. So I was like, screw it, book it. I'll just go there, drop off my stuff, and, and then we'll keep it going. I told my parents what was going on, and they were like, listen, we'll come with you to the new hotel, we'll help you take all your stuff, like, just wait for us. So I waited for them, uh, checked out of the El San Juan, and took an Uber to the new hotel. Now this hotel was so adorable looking, because it was almost like a little villa type of hotel. Very, very tiny. Um, very, very like close knit and the bar was super cute, but most of the, the, the hotel, including the entire bar was all outside. So like there was of course the roof, but there was nothing covering the entire bar. There were even trees that you could like touch from the seat at the bar. It was really, really cute, really adorable, but I didn't feel comfortable. I was just like, what the fuck is going on? I, I don't want to stay here. I don't want to stay here. And if the storm is as big as they say, this entire resort or this entire hotel rather is outside and I don't want to be here for that. And my dad um, really got nervous too. And he was like, you're coming with us. You're staying with us. And their hotel, which was great in the beginning, um, they had told us that um, there was going to be no one allowed outside that starting that following Tuesday at 3 p.m. You couldn't leave the hotel. If you went out, you had to go out early in the day and you had to be back by 3 p.m. That's when I started saying like, oh shit, like 
this is getting real. Not only did I get evacuated out of my hotel, but um, you guys are telling people that they have to be back by Tuesday, 3 p.m., and everything started closing. I even tried to take Brian, we tried to make the best of that Monday, that same day after we had switched hotels, we tried to make the best of it because it was literally the most beautiful day of all the days we were out there that Monday. And so we were like, screw it, let's go to El Morro today. Maybe they're, they're still open. And we had gotten there at like four o'clock or something and they had already closed. And so that's when we started being like, okay, you know, everything's closing, everyone's going home early, everyone's boarding everything up. This is, this is gonna be serious. And so that Tuesday that we were locked inside, we were just watching the Weather Channel and just trying to figure out what the hell was about to happen. And that's when they were saying that the island was literally going to be covered by the entire hurricane at a category four, at least a very strong category four or even category five. And so me being from New York and never having gone through something like this, I had no idea, no idea what this was gonna be like. I couldn't even begin to wonder what the aftermath would look like. It was, it was, it was that crazy. Tuesday night, wind started picking up at around 10 o'clock. And for those of you who follow me on Snapchat, I even made a little post on Snapchat about it. And the winds were picking up and picking up. And at around 12.30, in the morning that's when things started going really really hard and the wind was just all the noise that you heard period you're watching tv and the wind started overpowering the tv around 12 30 that's happening we're like screw this let's go to bed we'll sleep through the whole thing and we'll wake up tomorrow and deal with it yeah fucking right i noticed at like one o'clock um, I had fallen asleep and then I noticed at like 1 o'clock I started like hearing noise and more and more noise and then I started noticing that the window was leaking and I wake up my dad because at this point my parents and my boyfriend and I are already at the other hotel sleeping in the same room and I, I wake up my dad and I'm like dad that's leaking maybe we should call them downstairs maybe they need to tighten the window or something and I start freaking out because I'm like this now the floods are going to start and I hear it outside like this is not a joke. He called um, the front desk downstairs. They sent somebody up like that and two guys came and were drilling screws into the window to try and keep it shut. And so they were like, we're, we'll do this. Keep the towel on the on the windowsill and it should be fine. Bullshit again because that shit started leaking all over again and it starts leaking more and it starts leaking through both sides. So I'm like, okay, like whatever, it's leaking, we're cleaning it up. My dad kept getting up throughout um, the next couple of hours, cleaning the floor because everything started getting wet on the floor. And then at around 2.30 or so, I'm watching George Lopez because I'm trying to not think about what's going on outside. And so I'm watching the George Lopez show and everything goes out. The lights go out and everyone had fallen back asleep at this point that i'm watching the george lopez show everything went out and me being the anxious person that i am i started having a legit panic attack in the middle of the hurricane i burst it out into tears and i started freaking out because i didn't want to stay in the room i didn't know where i wanted to go i just didn't want to be there i felt like the window was too close i felt like you know, you could hear the tree branches and, and, and just stuff on the street being smacked against the wall. And so there's, there's a point where, you know, I, I have a full-fledged panic attack and my boyfriend and my mom and my dad are all trying to calm me down. And I calm down a little bit. And this is like around, this is maybe like around five-ish, five-ish, because this... They said that the hurricane didn't actually arrive until 5 a.m. So this is this is when it was. Um, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna try and, and fall back asleep. And like my boyfriend's rubbing my back, my mom's rubbing my head, and I'm like trying to fall asleep. And I swear to God on everything, the second 
the second that I closed my eyes, something smashed against the window and left a huge crack in the window. I'm, I'm just looking at my phone because I'm gonna show you guys what, what it looked like. Hopefully you're able to see. But the window was completely shattered and glass everywhere. And that was the moment where I got up and I was like, I'm getting the fuck out of here. I am not staying in this room. I will go and sleep in the freaking hallway because I do not feel safe here. And so my boyfriend opens the door to see if there was anyone outside. And we noticed that there was like people from the hotel there and they have flashlights and they were like, look, if you guys don't feel safe here, then go down to the basement. Everyone can ride out the rest of the storm in the basement. We don't want you up here, especially if your window cracked, you don't, we don't want you here. I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm, I'm getting out of here and I'm going down to the basement. And I grabbed my pillow and I put on my, my slippers and we went down to the basement and there were a bunch more employees. Um, and other people from other rooms, everyone with their stuff, with their pillows and everything. And what we were down in the basement and there was like a long ramp and then there was the exit door. And what they had done was taken a large rope and tied it around something, around a banister or something to keep the door from swinging open. But the noise that I heard, the whistle, of the of the winds it was literally 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 whistling like it was almost as if it was taunting it, it still gives me nightmares because it was whistling and it was so loud so loud and you just hear things flying and you hear things breaking and you hear the door on the verge of being bust open like that huge metal door just shaking back and forth because because the winds were going 155 miles per hour i i i could not i could not and i'm there like covering my whole head my boyfriend and i are cuddling he's like cuddling me and we're like i'm like dazing in and out because i had not slept i had woken up the day before probably around like eight o'clock in the morning and um i hadn't slept i slept for like a half an hour and then got up once i saw that the window was leaking so i hadn't slept i'm like nodding in and out and then the noise would wake me back up again so i'm like looking all around because i, I had no idea what the hell was about to happen I, it literally felt like a movie it felt like a movie this family came down and they had a radio and we were trying to listen through to the radio and um they kept scaring everybody because they kept saying that the eye of the storm hadn't came yet and so I, all i'm thinking all i'm thinking is like holy fucking shit this is terrible right now and it's about to get worse in 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 30 more minutes it was like it was like 6 45 or something like that when they said that and and supposedly the eye of the storm was going to pass at about 7 30 or 8 or something like that and so i'm just like what the hell is about to happen now like i literally thought the building was going to come down the the door was going to open and it, we were just going to be flooded and i did not know what to do at that point. Um, I, re I had heard on the news, we had kept listening on the radio and they had said that the storm had kind of shifted. And so around 7.30ish, instead of the worst coming, which is what we thought, it started dying down a little bit. And we were able to go back upstairs eventually but then they made us come back down because at around 9.30 they said it was supposed to pick up. The winds were supposed to pick up again. So we had to go back down from 9.30 till about 11.30. And then at 11.30 they let everyone start going back upstairs. And I remember just grabbing grabbing my, my, my bed sheet and just throwing it over myself. And I just knocked out because I was so tired i was tired of crying i was tired of being scared i was I, I it was finally a moment for me to catch my breath and so i just knocked out for like two hours and then when i woke up the power generator had turned on and water was running and i had gotten phone signal again and 
that's when everyone is like texting me like are you guys okay we, we see the news are you guys fine and I'm responding to people and uh, someone had posted on my Instagram I remember this was later in the day but someone had posted on my Instagram asking why I hadn't said anything about Puerto Rico yet and Mexico and everything that was going on and I normally don't respond to negative comments because I don't believe in that but I needed to let this person know that I don't do these videos just for the hell of it and just to 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 try and make a quick buck or anything like I truly truly love my island and my country and my people and the reason that I haven't said anything is because I'm fucking here right now I'm I'm experiencing it I'm one of the victims of all the people all the all the people that were on the island that day when that happened and so that was one of the things that really got under my skin because I don't do this just just for the hell of it like I am so proud of where I come from and my history that's the only reason why I didn't say anything is because I was fucking living it after Wednesday the rest of that day Thursday was when everything got knocked out. It was really weird because we had cell phone service, but I guess as the storm traveled through the rest of the island and outside of San Juan, that's when like all the communication started getting knocked out and that's where where shit really got real because you couldn't send a text, you couldn't make a call, you couldn't do anything. Um, and, and service would come very, you know, sporadically, like, I would be in a corner and I would all of a sudden get service and my phone would pop up with all of these messages and I wouldn't be able to move from that area so that I could respond to that text or something. No data service whatsoever, so no checking social media or anything. No way of being able to tell what the hell was going on and it was so weird because I was there yet I had no idea what was actually happening and what states the other, you know, areas and the other towns were in. The news, everything the news is telling you about the long gas lines and the food lines and the lines to get cash is oh so true. Oh so true. They, I, I knew people that were waiting over 24 hours for gas and the lines not moving and you know I'll tell you the story about the hotel thing after but we ended up having to get shifted to another hotel we couldn't stay with family we had no idea where they were how they were if they had evacuated to shelters except for one of my cousins but anyone else we didn't get into contact with so we had no idea what happened to them so I know that there's a lot of debate going on about what help Puerto Rico is or is not getting at this time and I can tell you firsthand that I saw every uniform that you can imagine. There was the Air Force, the Navy, the Marines, the Coast Guard, the FEMA, uh, U.S. Customs, U.S. Border Patrol, U.S. Homeland Security, everything, everything. I don't know whether the conflict is that there's not enough boots on the ground or there is enough boots on the ground and they're just not getting out to everyone. But I can tell you in San Juan that I did see a lot of people at work every day from the crack of dawn to till, until the curfew. There was a curfew put in place because of the power outage from 7 a.m. first to um, 5 p.m. Then they changed it to 6 p.m. Then they changed it to 7 p.m. And I think that it was a really smart idea because given the fact that there aren't even any street lights, it is so dangerous to be walking outside at that time. From the crack of dawn until the curfew time, I saw tons of people helping. Um, and I don't know if that's just San Juan because San Juan is a major city in Puerto Rico and, and a major tourist attraction, but Puerto Rico desperately, desperately needs your help. And literally my nails are just a, a, an example of the anxiety that I felt I needed to put on a full face of makeup today because makeup is just my escape and, and today was the first day that I got to sit down and, and do it and, 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 and concentrate and think and reflect on what the hell I just went through. Throughout this whole time we were supposed to leave on September 22nd and our flights kept getting cancelled and, and, and rescheduled and cancelled and rescheduled but 
The storm was so bad that it knocked out the satellite towers for the planes and that was the reason why so many flights were canceled and are being canceled because the the air traffic control and, and and signaling and all of that is now coming from Miami and so they can only do so many planes within that territory and then within an, an entire you know other place a different island and you know I I can't even imagine what everyone else is going through because I'm so lucky that I was able to leave the island and come back home but there are 3.4 million Americans that are still there and need your help and so down below I've listed the link to Unidos por Puerto Rico which was put together by the First Lady of Puerto Rico Beatriz Rosselló and there are many different sponsors um, and, and a lot of companies coming together to really support this cause and so I'll leave the link down below for that and please don't only choose that charity if you have another charity or you know another nonprofit that you want to donate to to help Puerto Rico by all means do what you can um, of course money is going to be the biggest help right now but you can also donate clothes food anything any goods that you think feminine products anything that you think will help the people of Puerto Rico I will be donating every paycheck that I get um, because not only is it in my home but I was there to experience it and I was there to live through it and I was there to see my beautiful island completely destroyed and for me I don't regret it because I, I, I praise Puerto Rico so much and you guys see here on my channel how proud I truly am to be from there and to be able to say that I was there during its worst moments means a lot to me. It was the scariest day of my life and even the days after because people were starting to get desperate for food and for cash and for gas and it became dangerous at times but you know you you really realize in moments like this how precious life is and how blessed we all are how blessed you are to be on your computer or your phone or your tablet watching this video watching other videos you know how how easy it is for you to pick up your phone and, and call or text someone and, and and little things that we take for granted like electricity you know um, food running water phone signal everything i just mentioned like you don't realize it until it's completely taken away from you and i really feel like i appreciate life in a different way now because to have none of that stuff but your family around you it just shows you that life is so much more than these materials than these things that we have that we claim we need you don't need any of it you know and, and the things you do need when they're not readily available, like food and running water and all of that, you lose your mind a little bit. It it still baffles me because it doesn't feel real. And I don't, I don't want to start crying here. But it was real. And Puerto Rico really is suffering right now. And I ask you, if you're watching this video, to please do anything you can have. Even if you donate a dollar, anything, anything will help and save all of our fellow Latinos, our fellow Americans. And please just, if you can do anything, please do. It, it will make the world a better place. So thank you for watching this video. I'm sorry if it was long or, or anything, but I really wanted to share with you guys my experience and what I went through and, and what all the other people on the island are, are, are still experiencing and, and really spread the word of how bad it is over there and how much they really do need our help. Please like this video, share this video, and please subscribe. And I hate to bring things down on my channel, but this is such a huge deal that there was no way that I couldn't make this video. But again, please comment down below if you want to see more videos. My, my vlog um, 
I, I still have my vlog. I'm not sure if I want to upload it, but if you do want to see it, please let me know. I kind of didn't want to show ev all the destruction and everything. I didn't film at all during the hurricane, and even the last few days, I just stopped filming, period. Um, but if you guys want to see what I do have from the vlog, please let me know. And that's pretty much it. So thank you guys for watching. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.